with the world at a turning point, we must choose the right path and commit to it. So that this time, the vision of lifelong learning as a common good and human right is followed by truly transformative actions. Equity in higher education begins, as a matter of fact, in uh, preschool education. So, in a way, higher education represents the very last stage of a continuum of inequities. Diversity in Asia highlights the equity gaps both within and between countries. So, addressing diversity and trying to narrow uh, across more equity, I think, is a very important issue, not only worldwide, but in particular important for the Asian context. How children learn in school in urban America is, for example, uh, quite different from children's learning in rural Morocco or rural or urban South Africa. During this early work in the 80s and 90s, I was initially surprised to learn how little international development agencies knew about such differences in learning pathways for children in diverse cultural, demographic, geographic, and linguistic contexts. The SDG4 Education 23rd Regional Monitoring Report that we just published, UNESCO, ECLAC and UNICEF together, emphasized that the SDG4 targets will not be met without a change in the direction of policies and resource allocation for education. Education systems have actually contributed towards the inequality in society. What are the primary drivers of this? This attention to merits and meritocracy with the belief that the meritocratic system will be the great equalizer. But it actually has done the opposite. We need to find a new benchmark, a new system, and that's finding two. Fraser considers social justice as a participatory parity, economically, culturally and politically. She says that social and institutional arrangements can either enable or constrain participatory parity from three dimensions. The economic, which relates to the mal distribution and redistribution of material resources, the cultural, which relates to the misrecognition and recognition of cultural attributes, and the political, which relates to political voice and contains two levels of injustice, misrepresentation and misframing. Now to transform education supposes that quality basic education has been universalized. The equal uh, educational, that equal educational opportunity is largely a reality. But we know it's not the case, uh, and it's not the case in many of the more vulnerable communities and societies around the world. So a primary rationale for the transformation of education has less to do with the future than it has to do with the past. It has to do with the unfulfilled promise of the universal right to education. And that despite progress in expanding educational opportunity over the decades, hundreds of millions of children, youth and adults continue to be excluded. We need to position the informed quest for a sustainable future as a core purpose of education at all level. As comparative and international educators, we need to foresee the trends and enhance multilateral relations to be ready with cutting edge research and high quality advice when these decisions arrive on the political stage. We could show how important it is to bring the global and local perspectives and realities together. The Open Textbook has the affordances to serve as a platform or mechanism through which to save money for students, to incorporate the voices of collaborators and students, politically challenge the status quo, shift power dynamics and address issues of relevance, decolonizing where necessary and countering existing publishing models. Connectivity is key to supporting the right to education as we look to the future, working towards the implementation of global commitments and maximizing effectiveness of inclusive, equitable, quality education and lifelong learning opportunities for all. Social 
，并在新冠疫情的背景下，为保证教育持续、实现高等教育的发展愿景做出了重要的贡献。对发展中国家而言，高等教育机构往往缺乏必要的资金与资源支持，通信网络等基础设施也相对薄弱。教师的数字化教学科研素养亟待提升。Principles of extensive consultation, joint contribution, and shared benefits helped international organizations, governments, universities, private partners to build an ecosystem supporting the digital reform at different IOE national centers. Let us work together towards the digital future in higher education.